In the Caribbean, a storm unlike any other has gathered strength and just hit Jamaica. The winds are deafening and the seas are rising. This isn't just another hurricane season headline. This is Hurricane Melissa, a Category 5 monster now threatening to become the most powerful storm ever recorded to strike the island nation. In the Caribbean, a storm unlike any other is gathering strength. The winds are deafening, the seas are rising, and Jamaica stands directly in its path. This isn't just another hurricane season headline. This is Hurricane Melissa. A Category 5 monster now threatening to become the most powerful storm ever recorded to strike the island nation. As of Tuesday morning, Hurricane Melissa has intensified into a catastrophic Category 5 system, the highest classification on the Saffir Simpson scale. With sustained winds reaching 180 miles per hour or 280 kilometers per hour, it has already become the most powerful hurricane to approach Jamaica since record keeping began in 1851. Meteorologists at the US National Hurricane Center in Miami confirm that Melissa Center is just hours away from landfall. The storm is crawling north-northeast at roughly seven miles per hour, a dangerously slow pace that means it will hover over the island longer, amplifying destruction through relentless wind, rain, and storm surge. What makes Melissa especially concerning is how quickly it transformed from a tropical storm into a catastrophic hurricane. In just 24 hours, its wind speeds jumped from 70 miles per hour to 140 miles per hour, one of the fastest intensification events ever recorded in the Atlantic. This rapid escalation left forecasters and emergency planners with limited time to prepare and residents with little room to evacuate. Experts say Melissa's development rivals that of infamous hurricanes such as Wilma in 2005 and Patricia in 2015, both of which underwent explosive strengthening over warm ocean waters. Unlike fast-moving systems that pass quickly, Melissa's sluggish speed makes it particularly destructive. Moving no faster than a running person, the storm will linger over Jamaica for many hours, possibly more than a day, pouring torrential rainfall on already saturated ground. This slow movement significantly raises the risk of catastrophic flooding and widespread landslides, especially in mountainous areas like St. Andrew, Portland, and St. Mary. Meteorologists warn that some regions could see up to 600 millimeters, 24 inches, of rain, enough to inundate low-lying towns, cut off major highways, and destroy fragile hillside communities. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has declared a national emergency describing the storm as an unprecedented threat and warning citizens to take evacuation orders seriously. All airports have been closed and toll barriers on Jamaica's main highways have been lifted to allow free movement for evacuation. The government has identified 850 emergency shelters capable of holding over 20,000 people, though far more are expected to seek refuge as the storm intensifies. Despite repeated warnings, aid groups report that many residents are choosing to stay in their homes, either out of fear of looting, attachment to their property, or simple disbelief that the storm could reach such strength. Many have never experienced anything like this before, said Colin Bogle, an advisor with Mercy Corps near Kingston. The uncertainty is frightening. There's profound fear. Fear of losing homes, of losing livelihoods, of displacement. The timing could hardly be worse. Jamaica is still recovering from Hurricane Beryl, which devastated parts of the island just a year ago. Roads, bridges and hospitals damaged in that storm remain under repair. And many rural areas never fully recovered economically. Prime Minister Holness admitted that there is no infrastructure in the region that can withstand a Category 5. For Jamaica, he said, the real test will come after the winds die down in how quickly the country can rebuild. Economically, the stakes are immense. Tourism, which makes up nearly one-third of Jamaica's GDP, is at risk of a long-term setback. 
Several major resorts have already been evacuated, and cruise lines have diverted ships away from Caribbean routes. The island's agricultural sector, still fragile from previous storms, faces another potential blow, threatening food security and export revenues. Meteorologists are particularly worried about the southern coastline, where storm surges could reach 4 meters, about 13 feet, above normal sea level. Towns such as Kingston, Old Harbour and Savannah Lamar are on high alert, with emergency crews racing to fortify hospitals and power plants near the coast. These surges can sweep away entire buildings, destroy bridges and contaminate freshwater systems with seawater, damage that can take years to repair. Officials also fear that power outages and communication breakdowns could complicate rescue efforts once the storm moves inland. Scientists say Hurricane Melissa is another stark reminder of how the climate crisis is fueling stronger, faster forming tropical systems. According to Climate Central, a US-based research organization, Melissa intensified while traveling over ocean waters that were 1.4 degrees Celsius warmer than the historical average. Those warmer waters acted as fuel, providing the energy the storm needed to strengthen so dramatically. Researchers estimate that these unusually hot conditions were made up to 700 times more likely because of human-induced climate change. Melissa is already the fourth Atlantic hurricane this year to undergo rapid intensification, a process where wind speeds jump by at least 35 miles per hour in under 24 hours, a rate that used to be extremely rare but is now becoming alarmingly common. After crossing Jamaica, Melissa is projected to move toward Cuba, bringing life-threatening conditions to the island's eastern provinces before continuing toward Haiti and the Bahamas. Both Cuba and Haiti have issued evacuation alerts. Haiti faces an even greater risk due to deforestation and unstable terrain, which makes landslides more likely. Regional agencies are coordinating aid shipments and rescue teams, but access remains a major challenge. The United States Agency for International Development and the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency have both mobilized response teams and pre-positioned relief supplies in the Cayman Islands and the Dominican Republic. Meanwhile, satellite imagery from NASA shows Melissa spanning hundreds of miles its massive cloud bands covering nearly the entire Western Caribbean Sea. The storm's eye, clearly visible from space, has a diameter of over 30 miles, signaling extreme organization and intensity. As Jamaica braces for impact, the world watches closely. Experts say the coming days will test not only the country's resilience, but also the region's ability to adapt to an era of more extreme weather events. Hurricane Melissa is a storm that will be remembered not only for its power, but for what it represents. A warning about the future of the world's climate and the vulnerability of island nations facing its consequences. As Prime Minister Holness put it, the question now is not whether we can survive this storm, it's how we recover from it and how we prepare for the next one.